God bless you. We thank God for you today. Thank you for being in the house of worship today. Amen. Amen. We're looking for the Lord to bless us as others gather in the house of the Lord. Uh, as you can see, we are doing some things new and different. Amen. And uh, allowing people now to come back uh, to the house of the Lord. Amen. God bless you. And we're just giving God thanks and praise for all of his goodness and his mercy toward us. Amen. And uh, we just come to magnify the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 Come on, let's give Jesus Christ a hand off in a praise. So I know that you're ready for worship, and we're excited about what the Lord is going to do for us on today. Amen. And we're expecting great things uh, from the Lord as he has already blessed us uh, because we have already entered into the house of the Lord. <clears throat> His God has been good to us uh, all week long up until now, and uh, we just give him praise. And so I want you just to be glad about Jesus, be glad about being in the service, Amen. And expect great things from the Lord. Amen. 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 Through the preached word, through songs that will be sung on today. Amen. The praises that are going up before the Lord. Amen. Just magnify God along with us. Amen. So let's open up our voices and lift them up into the Lord and sing unto the Lord. Amen. He has made me glad. I'm glad about it. Amen. 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 I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he made me glad. Give the Lord a hand off and a praise on today. Amen. He has made me glad. You know, I know this is Super Bowl. Some call it Super Bowl Sunday. But uh, this is not Super Bowl Sunday for me. It's Super, it's super Sabbath day. Amen. Yes. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. The Bible says the Sabbath is the Lord's. Amen. I'm not trying to take your fun away because I'll be watching the game too. But hey, this day belongs to the Lord. Amen. Yeah, yeah. So we came to praise him. Amen. People getting ready for uh, the game and they were shopping. I went to the store yesterday and people were in line buying all their little trinkets and whatnot and food, uh, snacks and getting ready to barbecue and all of that stuff. And I went online today to see how much a ticket would cost to go to the Super Bowl. The lowest ticket, I think, was around $2,500. Oh, 
all the way up into $5,000 and above just to go to one game. And I said, if people love that much, well, maybe I shouldn't talk because I don't want people to get mad at me. Amen. But if they love the game that much, how much more should the body of Christ love coming to church? Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 Thousands upon thousands will be watching the game on today, uh, including Christians. Amen. In including myself. But the first thing is first thing is first. That's right. And that is to give God praise. Amen. 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 As you can see in the sanctuary, we've changed some things so that we can allow people to worship uh, a little bit uh, more freely. And uh, we're still broadcasting the service. I don't even know if that's a term anymore. Uh, but we're still Zooming the service <laughs> to the people. Amen. That's the old school stuff, right? right. Amen. We're still uh, streaming. And zooming and all this kind of thing to the uh, people of the Lord, Amen. And so we're trying to get ready for people to return to the house of the Lord, Amen. amen. Come back, come on back, come on back, and Amen. Let's worship God together, Amen. Sister Peer is going to come, Amen, and share with us the word of the Lord, Amen. On this morning from First Corinthians chapter thirteen, uh, verses four through ten, and let us hear the word of the Lord. Good morning, MTC family here around the world and online. Today, the scripture reading is taken from, from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 10. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude, it is, it, is it, it is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes and perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearing and the reading of his word. Amen. God's love, God's love is perfect, and uh, his love is sure. And if you really want to know the love of Jesus Christ, you can find it on today. As you worship with us and as you hear the word of God, the love of Jesus Christ is just for you. It's come just for you. Amen. For God is love, and he came in the person of Jesus Christ so that you might be saved and that you might know him on today. And so at this time, we're going to have our prayer request. And if you have a request upon your heart, make it known unto the Lord. The Lord hears and he answers all of our prayers. And I know there's so many that we could not even uh, number here today because uh, the requests that have come in this past week, amen, has just been overwhelming and people are just hurting all over the world. And we ask that you would pray for those who have lost loved ones those who are bereaving, those in, the, in hospitals, those that are sick, those who have been uh, affected by this virus uh, in any way, in any form, amen. Yeah, I know things are changing, but we still have to be safe because we don't know, amen. Uh, we have to be safe because we don't know where this thing will come next, amen. So we, we ask that you continue to pray and, and believe God I mean, for his divine protection, not only over us, but our families and our friends as well. Amen? Amen. If you have a prayer request upon your heart, just lift your hand right where you are. Amen. As we're always going to ask our elder words if she would come. 
Amen. And pray God's blessings and healing over those who are sick and need a prayer. Father, we're so grateful today for all of your blessings and your benefits unto us. We thank you for another privilege and opportunity that we have just to assemble ourselves together. We thank you, God, just because you have given us the opportunity to be in your presence. We realize today, God, that you have been good, you have been merciful, you have been gracious. We thank you, Lord, because it's not because of any goodness of our own, but we thank you, God, just because you looked on us and just allowed us another opportunity. Lord, we bring all our requests to you today. We ask you, O oh God, just to meet us right where we are. In the name of Jesus, we ask you, O oh God, to bless those today that are hurting, those that are bereaved. We ask you, God, to bless those that are waiting for their healing. We ask you, God, to supply needs today. Make ways, open doors. In the name of Jesus, for those today that are homeless, Lord, those that are without, we ask you, O oh God, to have mercy on them and to send an answer, Lord, that their needs might be supplied. We ask you, O oh God, to bless those today that are have no peace, that have no joy. But Lord, we know today that you are a supplier of everything that we need, that we can cast all of our care upon you because you care for us. There's nothing too hard for you to do. And we thank you because we serve a God that can do the impossible. And Lord, for the things that you've done, for what you're doing, for what you're going to do, we say thank you. And Lord, we ask you to bless this service today in the name of Jesus. We ask you to strengthen our elder Calvin, Lord. We ask you to give him a word. We ask you to send your mighty anointing today that your word will come forth with clarity and with power. And we each might leave today saying it was good to have been here. Father, we thank you again in the matchless name of Jesus. We say thank you. Amen. Come on, let's give God praise. Amen. 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 Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup. Fill it up and make me whole. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up and make me whole. How many want the Lord to fill their spirit and their hearts? Amen. 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 You know, a lot of people feel like they're running on empty. Yes. But how many know that God will fill us up yes. with his power when we have no more strength? Yes. He fills us up. Amen. Yes. Amen. Thank you for the Holy Spirit today. Amen. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Come on, let's give Jesus Christ an offering of praise. Amen. The Memorial Tabernacle Church has come together by the Holy Spirit for the specific purpose of preaching and teaching the Word of God, the Bible, and about Jesus Christ, God's Son, and to proclaim the gospel of the kingdom of God to the North Oakland community is an environment to bring healing to brokenhearted and deliverance to the oppressed. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. If it had not been for Jesus, where would I be? I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. Jesus. 
Amen. Our sister Tiffany is coming down, amen, to uh, give us the announcements for this week, amen, and for the upcoming uh, month, amen. And so please govern yourselves accordingly and, and let us do our very best, amen, to uh, support all that God is trying and will be doing in our church, amen. Come on, sister Tiffany. Amen. God bless. Good morning, church. Good morning, morning y'all. Excited to be in worship with each of you on today. Excited about what God is doing and how he's continuing to move and bless. Um, just a few reminders that we have for today. Remember that every Sunday evening between the hours of 6.30 and 7.30, we lift our prayer request before the Lord. And then join us on Tuesday evenings at 7 o'clock for our conversational Bible study and awesome time learning how to apply God's word to our lives. And as you know, we're doing little events every Sunday um, in honor of Black History Month. Um, so today we're going to sow love to our community. So anyone that's able to hang out with us from 1230 to 2, um, will come by and visit us. If you're on Zoom, come by and say hey. And just I think it's important for us to maintain our presence outside of the building, literally so, um, every few months. Because, you know, people, the community is constantly changing. Neighbors are constantly coming in. We aren't doing door knocking to meet our neighbors. So when is the opportunity for our neighbors to know that we're here and we want them to be a part? So it's always awesome for us to make sure our presence remains consistent and constant in our community. And we're just excited about how God is continuing to move and bless. And um, for everyone, I want to wish everyone an early, happy Valentine's Day. May you be filled with the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> it's a beautiful day just knowing that God loves you and that's enough. Amen. And I believe that concludes all of my announcements. Um, yeah, if you need a devotional, the, the, new, the new quarter is coming up, so if you need a devotional, let me know, and I can definitely mail you or give you one of those as well. So we're excited about this service. Um, we're going to hand it back over to our pastor. Please give him a hand as he comes. Uh, again, I want to remind you that the funeral services of our brother, Wendell Hogue will be on February the 22nd at 11 o'clock. It will be streamed in Zoom, uh, on Zoom, um, and people have been registering for that as well as registering for the service. If you have not registered for the service in Zoom, please do that. Go online to our website um, at www.memorialtabernacle.org and do that as soon as possible because we need to get some things back to the family so they can make some final preparations. So please do that on today. Um, I would also like to see all of the men that are here today. I, I ask you to please just about five or 10 minutes in the back. Uh, I'm really understaffed and I need everybody's support. Uh, I've been asking you for the last couple of weeks if you plan to help us by ushering and if you can do anything, please let us know immediately because we are very, very understaffed for that service and we need everybody's support. Uh, so if you can be an usher, if you can be a greeter or anything like that, please go online uh, to our uh, website or, or email us or call us at the church and let us know that you are available uh, to assist us on that day on February the 22nd. I know a lot of things are difficult because of this pandemic and these viruses out there, but hey, you want somebody to be there in your time of need. Amen? I'm going to say that again. You want somebody to be there for you in your time of need. So make the sacrifice. Amen? You'll be all right. God will take care of you. Amen? And I think Sister uh, Frazier is here today, Brother Smiley. She wants to meet with you after the service. Amen. And so you all get together. And uh, others of you, uh, we will share more with 
the staff of what we're going to be doing on that particular day. So may the Lord bless you. We come to have a glorious time in the Lord, and we are. Amen. You have something else, Brother? Come on. Brother uh, Darren has something. Oh, is the singing? Oh, I said, okay. And they're ready. They're on point. I'm trying to catch up to where they are. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. We get ready to give you to the hands of Brother Darren and Brother Smiley. Amen. Come on, let's say amen. Amen. Good morning. Uh, today is the day that the Lord has made amen. whereof we are glad. And um, I'm thankful to be here, to be a part, to help, to support and uh, do what I can uh, as far as anything. Amen. Because this is my church as well. Amen. What a mighty God we serve, Let's everybody. All. Let's all stand and sing this together. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. And goes bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. next song is oh how I love Jesus Amen. and I know everybody in here is here because we love Jesus there is a name I love to hear I love to sing his word it sounds like music in my ear the sweet
How many have the victory today? Y'all sound like it. You, you barely have it. Amen. I said, how many have victory today in Jesus? Amen. Amen. But we overcome him by the blood of the lamb, the enemy by the blood of the lamb, and by the word of our testimony. Amen. We are overcomers today. Amen. That there's no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. Amen. Because we have victory in Jesus' name. Amen. I just thank God for victory today and for strength, amen. And we're looking for the Lord to just continue to bless you throughout this service on today, amen. Just open your hearts up to the word of God, amen, as it comes to you today. And I believe that there is healing, deliverance, salvation uh, as we hear the preached word on today, amen. Amen. I come because I want to hear what God has to say to me, amen. Hallelujah. God is a good God. He's an awesome God. Amen. I praise God for you being here today. Amen. And again, we want you just to keep praying and, and, and uh, uh, seeking the Lord and, and believing him for those things that you have asked him to do, that he is more than able to hear and answer all of our prayers today. Our king is coming. Amen. And we want you to get your Bibles, get them ready. Amen. This is a Bible believing and a Bible teaching church. Amen. And, you know, I'm at this point, I don't care if you have it online or, or in a uh, phone or whatever. Make sure it's the Bible and not a game. Come on, give God a hand off and a praise. Yeah. Elder King is coming with the word of the Lord. Amen.
Gracious Father, we thank you for this day and thank you how you brought us thus far. Thank you for life, health, and strength. Laying down last night, rising up this morning. Reasonable amount of sanity in this world today. We praise you for it, oh God. Thank you, oh God, because we love you. You've given us strength and you've given us, oh God, your life that we might have a right to this tree. Now bless our neighborhood, bless our country, bless our church. Everywhere in Jesus' name we pray. Those who are sick and afflicted, those who are homeless, those who don't have sustenance, we ask you to touch every one of them in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Can we say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Genesis 1, 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and every other creeping thing that creeps on the earth. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Thank God. Another day. Yes. It's kept us alive. Yes. It was health and strength. Yes, yes. So I'm happy. Yes, yes. Huh? Huh? This is a song that I'm not going to say. Uh, years ago, they used to say, I feel good, good, good. Yeah. In my spirit, I feel good. Amen. Because God has been good to me. Uh, it, it's, you can almost feel that. Everybody in the community's attention is somewhere else. You just, just sense it. Everybody wants, I, I, who ever heard of chicken wings costing so much, Brother Malachi? <laughs> <laughs> you you want to go get your regular meal and everybody buying the stuff up for, for Super Bowl. And so they rose, I think this was up, chicken wings up 17%? Come on now. Mom used to buy one chicken. It was five of us kids. She bought one chicken, and when she cut the drumstick off and the wings off and the backs off and uh, the, the, the breast, she kind of quartered the breast and fed five kids and her and dad. And one chicken. And that one chicken didn't cost but a dollar or something back then. <laughs> but God has brought us to the day. Yes. And for that, I am happy yes. because it's a new day. And in this new day, we have to sometimes do new things. I keep on saying it every time, guys. I, I, I like to, I, I'm going to start using my paper notes like Sister Jeanette do. <laughs> because I, all I do is open it up, look at it. But God is, God is so good. Genesis 1, 26. I, I, I don't have a real subject here, but I'm piggybacking again off the pastor who piggybacking off of me, who piggybacking off the word of God. Uh, it's Black History Month. And uh, uh, I, I, whoever, any of y'all have saw uh, the movie Rambo? In, in, in the third one, I think it, it, there was a, a Middle Eastern fellow, Afghanistanian, I believe he was. He said, God must love crazy people. Y'all remember that? that, remember that, that, that? If you ever saw that? <laughs> and so Rambo say, he said, why you say something like that? He said, because he made so many of them. <laughs> and and I, think, I think about that quite a bit because he must really do love crazy people because it's a whole bunch of them everywhere. You walk outside the door, some of us in here may be crazy. I don't know. <laughs> God bless all of us. But uh, that saying it kind of stays with me, Brother Martin, because... There's some crazy active folks out there. Your boss act crazy the other day. <laughs> and, and just the, the one you think is going to be all sane and, 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 and in your corner and doing right, he's the one that's the craziest. Yes, yes. But God loves him. Yes. Can we say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. This past few, few months in, these, in this last year or so, we watched a, a new president come in and he laid out plans for the next couple of years, next four years. Uh, all presidents do that. And, but we serve a God who don't just be planning uh, for four years. He speaks in terms of centuries. He speaks in terms of eternity. Uh, 
who but God can say and tell someone or uh, people that you guys will be slaves for 430 years and I'm going to liberate them and bring them out of Egypt. And it kind of tells me that God's plans are far bigger than just yet tomorrow. They go 400 years sometime. And um, why is it that when God creates things, he simply goes out of his way to put variety. That's why I said what I said. He goes out of his way to put variety. Because it, uh, uh, craziness is in levels. We're not talking about insanity. We're talking about craziness. We had, had uh, back in school, we had people who just walking down the hall had folks laughing just because of the way they, they acted. And we say, he's crazy. And in that sense, he was because they did crazy things. But uh, he goes out his way to put variety everywhere around this planet. He, he doesn't uh, uh, just, just make a fish or a bird or a monkey or, or just a flower or just a tree. You can walk out the front door and see a whole bunch of different kinds of trees, a lot of different kinds of birds. You go to the zoo, you see all kinds of monkeys. You see all kinds of fish in the sea. God loves variety. Yes. So. Why wouldn't he make and create variety and diversity in the human race? What it is according to the Bible that say, what's, what, 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 what does it say in the Bible that creates all forms of life? We as humans, beings, are all created, how did the scripture say? In the image of who? God. That's who, that's who, that's who, he, that's, that's the image he put us in. That one single fact in life, it, it lifts us above every animal in the world. And at the same time, places us all on the same level, standing in the eyes of God. But we're just all human beings. In the eyes of God, all humans be began as one race. Every member of that race was entitled to a certain amount of respect and dignity simply because he or she is how? In the image of God. Yes. Everyone. When God created Adam and Eve, what color was their hair? Yes. What was the color of their eyes? What was the color of their skin? How tall were they? What shape or type of human face did they have? The answer to the question can be found in the book that's over 2,000 years old, and it's known as the Bible. And it tells us that we do not have the faintest idea to that answer. We don't even know. History doesn't know, because it it, 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 it'd be nice if they had iPhones and cameras back then, but they didn't have that. When God created humanity, these things were not a least bit important. They weren't important to God. Hope y'all going following along with me here. Yes, yes, yes. What mattered to God was that they would love God by choosing to do what? Obey him or they would choose to believe the lies about God's character and, and, and do their own thing listening to that serpent. After Adam and Eve, uh, uh, they, after they rejected God, uh, one, one command things, uh, 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 they, they just went from bad to worse. Yeah, you already don't have a house. You're already out there in the garden, quote unquote, naked. You don't know what you're going to do. You, need, you haven't figured it out quite yet. And then they turn around and messed up with God. <laughs> but, so, but the more people that multiplied in the earth, uh, the, the more they rejected the things of God and God himself. Evil and violence was the norm way back in those days. I find it interesting. Nothing is mentioned in the history of mankind before the flood about racial divisions among people. Have you have you all ever read anything like that? I have. The only race that exists in God's ears is the what? Human race. When God regrets uh, 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 <clears throat> that he had made or created humanity, it's the human race, 
that that broke the heart of God, that mankind's self-destruction led to God's judgment on the world with a what? A flood. God's love to humanity demonstrated through God's perseverance in Noah. He he found only Noah and his family that, that, that wanted to do the right thing. Put him on an ark. And he gave man a second chance. He gave us a second chance. When he cleaned up everything, he said, okay, go back out there and do what I told Adam and Eve to do in the first place. Replenish the earth. It's still, nobody's talking about, well, can we save the white people? Can we save the black people? Can we save the yellow people? Can we save the red people? Can we save the orange people, the blue people? Which one shall we say? Now God says, you're serving me. I'm just going to save you, and then I want you to go out and replenish. So, I'm getting there, you guys. At this point, everyone was in a relationship to one true God. God tells us again to just go out there and increase. God also makes a promise never to destroy all life again by flood. I, I often think of that. Tsunami that hit South Pacific, a whole bunch of folks passed away doing that, but he didn't, he, it didn't, he didn't do it when those 2012, y'all saw that 2012 thing, where the flood just covered the earth. No, God, he, he promised us this wasn't going to happen again. God told them to scatter over the first of the world, face of the world, fill it up with people. And they got together and decided, uh uh-uh, uh, no, we're not going to do what God said to do. Let's build us a great city. Let's get a city and we're going to reach up to the heavens. We're going to reach up to the sky and we're going to go up there and, and deal with God ourselves face to face. They didn't want to go scatter all over. They said they got all in one place. And even though they knew God had a plan for them, they rejected that plan. And they were not willing to help God with it. They decided they were not going anywhere. <laughs> There's something in us that just don't want to do what God says. I'm not going to cop to the devil. I don't hear it in me. <laughs> What's this song? I said, Jesus in me, Jesus in you. It's something like that. <laughs> and so, so, but they didn't have the Lord. They didn't have God's design inside of them. So they went out and they just built the temple. They built themselves a building. We're going to go up to heaven. There was a common language in Here's where where I'm coming from. There was a common language. Everybody spoke whatever that language was. We call it in English just to to, to clarify the air. Everybody spoke spoke English. And they said, hey, uh, 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 Brother Smiley, you go get me a pile of bricks and put it over here so we can get this over here. Uh, uh, Sisters, I don't want you to go and get me some straw so I can make some cement. Uh, 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 Brother Wesley, I want you to go back over there and get me a box of nails so we can nail this up. Everybody spoke the same language. But, 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 so what happened? But God said, wait, wait, these folks are confused. They're not doing it. So what he did, he confounded the language. He, co- he confounded the language. And, 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 and what happened, you know, we, 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 we're surmising because I wasn't there. Thank God. You people over here, you, you, you're speaking gibberish, and, and you're speaking jammerish, and you're speaking, we'll call that English, and we'll call that Chinese, and we'll call that uh, Spanish, and we'll call that uh, Celtic, and we'll call that Russian, and we'll call that. In other words, uh, you, you group that, if you understand me, you go over here. You understand me, you go over there. In other words, men separated themselves from one another. What, up to that point, one humanity. Then all of a sudden, there were several humanities, several, several tribes, if I may use it, during that day, because the, the earth, thank God, wasn't as crowded as it is today. They lost the ability to communicate with one another, with and with God. So we had reached the point where no single group of people is just serving God. It was a group, one group, one mankind, one humanity, serving God. And then all of a sudden, we got a whole bunch of factions. It kind of reminds you of our country, huh? 
We used to be the United States of America. Now we got the United States of the South, the North, the East, and the West. Even though we walk and talk about race as though it was some distinct scientific thing, it's not. The truth is, we are related to one another in some very complex way. If, if, if you need a blood transfusion, if, if you, uh, I'm, I'm black. Just because Brother Smiley is black, that don't mean Brother Smiley's blood can, can, can work in my blood. I might have to go find somebody in Tibet that, that have the kind of blood that I have to help me out. See, we are related as human, as the human, uh, uh, human uh, uh, beings go. God wanted to make himself known to people who then would tell other people what God was like and what God's laws were. God wanted to be in relationship with humans. He did not choose a group of people based on their race. He did not do that. He did not. It's one of the worst things that happens every Sunday morning. White churches go to white churches, black churches go to black churches, Chinese churches go to Chinese churches, English churches go to English churches, Mexican churches go to Mexican churches. People don't. Praise God. He did not choose that. God started with Abraham, Sarah, and from there the world was divided into two regions, those who serve God and those who serve the devil, so to speak. And those who, who served the God became, the, the almighty God became the Jewish nation. Huh. But God made it clear. There is nothing special about the Jews. They were not the largest, they, may I say that again? They was not the largest congregation. I'll use that word for us now. They were not the Lord, but they were humble. They were humble and, and, and they weren't the most powerful. They didn't have the most money. They were a small, humble group of people who kind of roamed around out there in the desert. Yet God set his affection on them. It did not work for, uh, for he, 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 he worked in their lives. Let me say it like this one. He worked in their lives for the benefit of who? The whole world. Throughout the whole book of Genesis, you don't find racism as a basis of for people uh, interacting. You didn't find that. It was, if humans interacted with humans in that, in that book. When Moses led the people of God out of Egypt, out of Israel. Excuse me. Uh, you know, pollen is terrible this time of year, so if I cough, y'all bless, y'all pray for me. <laughs> but, 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 but when Moses led those folks out of Egypt, he, he, he didn't just lead uh, uh, one people, one kind of people. He led his people. Now, think about this. Think about this. Moses was in Egypt. And Egypt is in Africa. A lot of folks forget Egypt and Africa. They're so interested in stuff coming out of the stars and space and pyramids and stuff. They forget Egypt is part of Africa. Yes. Have you ever seen uh, the pictures of the mummies of uh, Imhotep and, 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 and Tutankhamun? And when they unwrapped those mummies, those were some black folks in there. Right. They, weren't, they, weren't, they weren't blue eyed, blonde hair. They were, they were black folks. Excuse me, other racists, if you're listening to me. I'm not, I'm talking with Black History Week. Yeah. I'm talking Black History yeah. they, they, Ancient Egypt was a black country. Yeah. Yes, it was. The first indication, oh God, I, if I get into this more, I get, I get in trouble. <laughs> There's no way you could be in Egypt for 400 years, in Africa for 400 years, and, and all your folks come out Mm. <laughs> but one, one, one of the first instances in the Bible where we had racial prejudice in the Bible is, y'all read Numbers chapter, chapter 12? The people left Egypt. They'd seen miracles of God. They have not been to, gotten to the promised land yet. Moses was being exalted. I mean, his, this is our man. Oh, man, God... God, this is my leader. This is my man. But 
even within his own family, that jealousies rose up between Mary and Aaron. They, they wanted an equal standing. They said, oh, if Moses, you my brother and you the man, I want to stand and get some of this too. <laughs> That's one of the worst things in the world, jealousy. The only thing they could see, they could do, they at the, it, it's, it's, it, in order to, 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 to try to gain favor, they attacked Moses personally. Yes, yes, yes. They got in his business personally. They began to say to others, aren't you disappointed that Moses got a Cushite to be his wife? Y'all know what a Cushite is? Black woman. <laughs> see, y'all? Some of you didn't know that, you know. She was a black woman. Wolf's wife was like us. And we, 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 we exalt Moses, but we don't focus on looking at the fact that his wife, his wife who kept him going, who kept him strong, kept him a good man, Amen. was a sister. Yes. Amen. Amen. For the sisters, praise the Lord. Cush is in the land south of, of Egypt. And, and, and it's down kind of where Ethiopia is. Yeah, Ethiopia wasn't as light as they are back in them days either. Oh, God, give me strength, because y'all y'all looking at me for strange. The term is, is one of the most important terms used in the Hebrew Bible to refer to Africa and Africans. Ancient Egyptians seem to refer to black Africans in their southern borders as Kushu or Kush. So, so Mary and, 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 and Aaron, were, they, when they, 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 they got all jealous, they brought the race card out. Man, you should have, what you done? You should have married one of us. Well, God didn't give him one of us. He gave him one of them. Don't you think we could refer better off, we would be better off if Moses, if, 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 if he had just married one of his, one of us out of, that, that are in the tribe uh, 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 that's coming out of Egypt, and, and, and we, could, we could all be unified. God don't like people playing that card. He don't like it. God called the three of them together. He said, let me show you some of God, God's, I'll show you how much God didn't like that. God called the three of them, he got a, hey, come on, all three of you, come together. Gave a rebuke, because God was a little, a little ticked at that. Mary, what did he do? What did he do to Mary because she started that stuff? He turned her. Y'all want to read it? Read, read that chapter. He turned her white. God, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to make a, a I'm trying to stay in the vein here. But he turned her white like snow, the Bible says. She stayed that way seven days after Aaron went to Moses and said, please pray for my, pray for it, pray for it. See, see, Aaron, him and his sister was closer because Moses was raised in the palace. Yes, yes. Him and his sister did the work out there in the fields and made stones and made brick together. So they was, they was, they was real close. So, so he was, he, he went and he pleaded for his sister. He said, Moses, please talk to God. Talk to God about our sister because uh, 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 we can't have her like this. So God, Moses went and talked to God, and God changed her back in seven days. It's something how an issue is not an issue until certain people bring it up. Y'all yeah, yeah, yeah. know that? It's, it's not an issue. If people just start bringing stuff up, people get something in their heart, they start bringing stuff up. Nobody pay any attention to, to, to what's going on until somebody just got something in their heart and they bring it up. And when they bring it up, then they start trying to cause confusion. Mm, yes. <laughs> I, I don't know. She thought she could use that tension to get, get a little, get, use attention uh, uh, with people not liking what Moses did to get attention for herself. But she got Aaron to go along with it, and God saw it. God just did not like it. Now, 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 what if we really saw everybody created in the image of God? What if we saw it like that? How many of us would have a friend or a race or somebody else? I remember guys talking about uh, 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 during the Vietnam era in, in the Army. Were you in the Army? Well, I was at Fort Polk, Louisiana. And I just sit and, and I just sit in the groups with guys uh, that came back. And we were up in the barracks and some of them would have crazy and some of them. But a lot of them 
a lot of them would say little things like, if so-and-so hadn't stepped out there and pushed me out the way, uh, I'd be dead today. If another person took a bullet for me, and, and I'd be dead today. If it wasn't for that, people became, it wasn't about, wasn't about a black soldier or a Latin soldier or a white soldier. Man, you had green on. It was about, I, I got your back, you got my back, I got your back, and I got your back. Human beings should have each other's back regardless of where and who they are. It doesn't matter. Glory to God. It's amazing how God lets stories in the Bible to help us see how skin color doesn't, doesn't have a factor in choosing whether we should do right or whether we should do wrong. He, did, he didn't put that in. It's not in the Bible. Your color didn't have nothing to do. So they say, see, see, some people don't realize. They don't, they, don't, they don't realize the significance of you and I in the Bible because modern historians left out the history of individuals in the Bible and, 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 and they tried to make you think that it was just them who was in the Bible. And, and let, let's look at Jeremiah. Let's look at Jeremiah. Jeremiah was preaching to the folks. God told him, to, he said, I want you to preach to these people that God's going to come down and destroy this place by the Babylonians. He preached that. He preached that. And they, and, and they didn't like what he was preaching. They're like when, when pastor gets over here, you got to be saved. 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 You got to, if you want to go to heaven, you got to be saved. If you want to go to heaven, you got to have the Holy Ghost. And people don't like that. So what did they do? They come down there and they said, okay, okay, king. Uh, some, of the, some, of those, some of the powerful people, some of the people that, that gave the most money, some of the people that was in the, in, 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 in the, in the quote, unquote, uh, the power person's face, his, his court. They said, yeah, let's get rid of this man. He's talking this crazy stuff. And they took him and they said, okay, let's put him in the pit. Now, the pit was a pit with like we would, what we would call quicksand. Deep mud, and when you'd sink in that soft, deep mud, and you would, would drown by mud. They said, let's put him in the pit. So they took Jeremiah at the king's, at the king's, eh, he was a weak king. They, the king said, okay, put him in the pit. They put Jeremiah down in the pit. And when they put him in the pit, Jeremiah was just waiting there for the Lord to move. So what happened? A man called Ebed, Malachi, who was a black man. Take in what I'm just saying here. The brothers was there way back in the court of the king, and he talked to the king. He got into the king's ear. He said, let me tell you, this man is telling us the truth. Those Babylonians are out there, they're going to destroy us. If we don't go out there and do what, we, what, he, what he said do, they're going to take all of our lives. Listen to what the wisdom of God is telling you through this man. And, and the brother got before the king and began to talk to the king because he was a man. He wasn't just no man who, who, who stood up there with a, like a eunuch, as Pastor was saying, that, and stood up there with a spear uh, 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 and, a, and a shield to protect the king. He was a man of power, a man of statue. Yes. Talk to the king. When he talked to the king, the king listened to him. Back in the 60s, Mr. Dr. Martin Luther King went and talked to the king. He said, come on, Mr. Johnson, you got to sign this paper. You got to sign this paper. And when you sign this paper, oh, it's going to change things. So, so when Ed Bear Melichek, he, 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 when he talked to the king, it changed things. So uh, justice means something. Now, what happened? Babylon, Babylon came in and they, they jumped all over Israel. It jumped all over Jerusalem. And, but God told Ebed, he said, man, come on, Ebed. You was good to my man. You was good to my servant. So I'm going to save your life and your family life. God took care of him because he listened to God. But I, my point is that way back when, the people that don't mention is sometimes us. Hope you all hear what I'm saying. A lot of times in the Bible, people that we are talking about is a lot of times us. And, you know, when you know it's us, you know, when, you, when your people do something good, your chest goes out. Yes, yes. You have pride. And, 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 let me tell you something. When, when, when the revivalists come to town, 
And when the power of God comes to town, through God's men, through God's men, and, and, and a lot of times when it's us, all, all the brothers, sisters, and everybody from every church in town go to hear what, yeah. what's going on because they're proud of yeah. yours. My dad used to say, if you're going to be happy about anything, be happy about yours. Amen. It's mine. Yeah. I'm proud of my church. Yeah. Yeah. I'm proud of my church. I'm proud of my church. I'm proud of my church. At some point, there's going to be a whole bunch of folks sitting in those seats. But I'm proud of Christ so the sanctified church. Yeah. I think I look over the years, and I look over what, is, what has occurred over the years, God has God given us something to be proud of. God has given you something to be proud about. Oh. Am I going okay? Right. Am, am I doing? I'm, I'm, I, you know, sometimes you wrestle with stuff, and, 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 and I told Brother Malachi this morning, I said, I, I went over and over and over. I said, I went over to the last, yes, last yesterday, I went over to Friday, and I read it. I got up early this morning, I read it. I said, oh, Lord. Am I going to do this? Am I, going to, I want to give you what God gave me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Racism is real, saints. Yeah, yeah. Racism yeah. is real. In our society today, it's real. Yeah. But oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. You go out and, 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 and you build, you, want, you, you, you put your business in, 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 a, in a certain kind of community, and, and, and you want, it's not racism to put your business in a prosperous community that is not necessarily black, but it is, it, it is racism when they overtax you because you're black. Your insurance go high because you're black. You go out and you buy yourself a house, you pay two hundred some thousand dollars for it, or five hundred thousand dollars, you know, half a million nowadays. Even down in West Oakland, but because there are more of us that live around it, when you get your equity, your equity is in cut in half. You don't have what you thought you had. No, it, it's that kind of thing. But it feels racist to me when the Ohio Supreme Court ruled three times that the money doesn't go right to the black schools like it go to the other schools, and nobody still has operated or no one has still implemented what the Supreme Court has said. That's kind. Of, that's the kind of stuff that makes you upset. God doesn't send us to the past to make things right. God deals with us right here, right now. You have been entrusted by God with power in certain areas. What are you doing? Remember, God's plan is bigger than ours. God was never wanted the human race to stay divided. He did not want it. That was not what he wanted. He called Abraham way back when to get the process started. Abraham, you don't know, see, this is, this is why I say God works in centuries. God works way back when he got Abraham. He got Abraham's tribe together. He says, now Abraham, uh, uh, I'm not gonna tell you. All I'm gonna tell you that, that your seed will be like the stars of the sky. The sands are on the sea. That's all, that's all Abraham really knew. But he didn't know that seed was gonna bring forth way down the line a man called Jesus Christ. Yeah. John writes, John writes this, he said, he said, he said, for, he said, just to let you know how God is not thinking about who you are in terms of your color and your status. He says, so God so loved the world. God so loved the world. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, his only son for the world. He didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world. Whosoever believes in him is not condemned, but whosoever does not believe in stand condemned. Because they have not believed in the only son of God. Can you say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. I need to close this. God's division of people have nothing to do with race. The dividing of people had nothing to do with race. It had everything to do in, with belief. It had everything to do with faith in him and Jesus Christ. If the people today are so divided because they don't believe that God sent his son for all of us. And then there's some other folks out there that's saying, I'm part of the body. I'm part, let me tell you. That's a whole nother subject. But I'm not going to go there that much. Your body 
has all kind of different stuff in it. The body of Christ has all kind of different stuff in it. The body of Christ has all kind of different people in it. To make up what? One body. One body. Jesus Christ died so that he would have bring the people of the world together to bring about what? The body is called church. Church. And the Bible is the Holy Spirit dwells in God's church. It didn't say God's churches. Right, it right. said God's church. Yeah. Glory. Hope you understand what I'm saying. Paul tells us one of the mysteries of Christ is coming into the world to be our peace, and Christ was re was to reunite reunite us with the church, with the, as one body, a head, some arms. Oh, there's so much stuff in the body. Yes. There's so much stuff. I, I had I had the unfortunate occasion, brother pastor, to take. Kinesiology, and I was supposed to dissect the frog. I was supposed to dissect the frog. <laughs> and I went in the laboratory, and they said, Well, uh, the body will be here soon. <laughs> I said, right, That is not what I signed up for. But I signed up to dissect the frog. Not not the body, but, but, <laughs> but when you dissect, you have one individual and you go in there and you got eyes and you got hair, you got skull, you got all kind of parts of the skull, you got the jaw, the teeth, you got the neck, the neck bones all down through the spinal cord, the shoulder, shoulder blades, you got the ribs, you got the backbone, oh God, you got hips, you got thighs, you yeah, got, yeah. Oh, oh, you got shin bones down to your toe bone, all of that is the body of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, what is the body of Christ? It's made of black folk, white folk, Mexican folks, yeah. Chinese folks, Spanish folks. You got Hindus, you got Buddhists, you got all those people that got all these names, all kinds of people. But when you belong to the body of Christ, it doesn't matter what your race is. You are part of one body. And people need to get it un get, get an understanding. Right. If you're going to call yourself Christian, right. if you're going to call yourself Holy right. Ghost filled people, if you're going to call yourself a part of the body of Christ, you are one body. Yeah. 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 One body. Got folks running around here talking about Jesus Christ was white. Jesus Christ is this. And I mean, you see him as you see him. You see him as, you know, when I close my eyes, I see him as a brother. Amen. Because that's, my, that's, that's what I feel. That's what I am. But when you look at Jesus Christ, when you look at his, his ethnicity, right, use that word right, he didn't come from Europe. He didn't come from England. He didn't come from London. He came from around the Middle East and the Mediterranean. Black folk down there. And in the Bible, we've already read the scripture. When the Hebrews came out of Egypt, they didn't come out. Just one. one. Well, quit looking at Charlton Heston and all those guys. Quit looking at that. The story might be nice, but the, the depiction is wrong. Right. The right. depiction is wrong. Right. God brought us out a whole multiple kinds of folks, a lot of kind of folks. They, they took some of those guards out of there that, that believe what they believe. A lot of folks believe. Uh, uh, the Pharaoh's sister came out there with them. Oh, glory to God. I'm trying to get the point over to you. God has no respect. But, but when yeah. Peter said, he said, rise, Peter, come on, slay the Peter said, Peter said, I can't eat that stuff. He said, but everything I made is good stuff. Yeah. Everything I made is good stuff. Yeah. Come on, slay it and eat. Peter, he said, yeah, I perceive that God is no respecter of person. Yeah. Yeah. If you abide in your Christ, God ain't got no time for you being black or white or green right. or blue. He got time for you to be a saint, sanctified and filled with the presence of the Holy Ghost and fire and shouting and praying and God speaking in tongues. That's what God is looking for. He's looking for you to walk outside of your door and be in kind to somebody. He's looking for you to do right in your household. He's looking for you to do right in everyday life. That's what he's looking for because you're a party of one. Yeah. 
a body of one doesn't mean that, that, that you all separated. But let me tell you, I'm, I'm leaving this building, the pastor's legs walked out this way and his torso went that way. You understand what I'm saying? But that's a one person. He's one. And the church is one. The church is supposed to all walk the same way, talk the same way, speak the same way, live the same way, act the same way. We don't act crazy in Washington, D.C. on the 6th and come home and then get in the pulpits and talk about I love Jesus Christ. Can't do that. You got to live. You got to live right for Jesus every day, every night. You got to live right. You got to be right. Oh, God, hallelujah. Jesus walked out. He got, he's walking with his disciples going down the road. He, and he stopped. And, then, and he, he sent the disciples on to go get some meat. Stopped by the well. And here comes a woman from Samaria. Now, she, she was not the kind of folks that, that, that the Jewish people talk to. Don't talk to them folks. Plus, she was a woman, too, in the Middle East. You don't talk to women at the well in the Middle East. Oh, no, you don't. She can get killed, and you can get killed, and all kinds of crazy stuff can happen. But when she got, he said, give me some water. She said, said, wait a minute, you you talking to me? He said, your folks don't talk to my kind. He said, Jesus, give me some water. And if you knew who you were talking to, you'd ask him a whole lot more. But oh, God, he did not care. He did not care because I want to bring you into the body. I want to bring you into, I want to, what's the osmosis, is that what they call it? I want to osmose you into the body. Jesus Christ, Son of God. Come on, give Jesus a Christ a hand after this prayer. We are covered, covered, covered by the blood. Walking in faith, living in love. I am covered, covered, covered by the blood. Jesus has rescued me. I am covered, covered, covered by the blood. Walking by faith. Let the church say amen. Yeah. Elder Calvin preached about created in his image. Being created in the image of God. That creation was marred because of sin. And we fell out of relationship with the Father because of sin, he says. And the only way we can be brought back into fellowship with him is by him sending his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. A powerful message today. One that we need to consider and realize. But you know, he was talking about the church and I was sitting there and, and pondering that Who is that church? And you cannot be a part of the church until you have been created new and born into the body that he's talking about. Becoming a part of the church is not signing your name on the record. Becoming a part of the church is not because you walk down the aisle and shake the pastor's hand. That's being a member like in a club. To become a part of the body of Christ, 
that Elder King was talking about and that one church, you can only become a part of that body in the church is to be born into it. So everybody is talking about being a, the church is not the church. Let me make that clear. Just because you say you are uh, belong to a church does not mean that you're part of that body that he was talking about. Paul says if any man be in Christ, he is what? A new creation, a new creature. All things have passed away and behold all things have become what? And he says this, and I'm going to close on this. He says, over in Galatians chapter 5, he says, But God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but a new creation, Paul says. And then he went on and he says, Blessed be the God of our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined not by, no, I know Calvin used osmosis, but he has to be pressed, predestined us into adoption as the sons by Jesus Christ to himself. According to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. And then he concludes it by saying, in him we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins according to the richness of his grace, which he had made us abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, and having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven, which are on earth, in him. The only way this world can come back together oh my god i was i was feasting off of this the only way that we can enjoy and join together as one is through the body and the blood of jesus christ so all of the races that he talks about and all the races and we'll we'll if we really know who we are if we really know who we are in Christ, we'll make no difference. Amen. Because here's what's going to happen when the Lord comes back again. Every race, kindred, and tongue will bow before him. Amen. And we're going to all give him glory. That one language that he talked about, there will be only one. And that is to give God praise. Yeah. Amen. Uh -huh. And you know what? I'm so glad he's a great interpreter. Yeah. Because he needs no interpreter. He knows how to speak Spanish. Yes. He knows how to speak Latin. He knows how to speak Swahili. He knows how to speak Arabic. He knows every tongue that we speak. Yeah. And every tongue that gives him praise. Yeah. Yeah and gives him glory. He honors us. Aren't you glad you're saved today? Powerful word, powerful word. Everybody rest to your feet right now. Amen. 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 We are one in the body of Christ. Every last one of us. And I pray that someday and one day, and I'm going to just be honest with you, that day will come when the Lord comes back again. That day will come when the Lord comes back again, when we all get together. Amen. And I love that song. When we all get to heaven, what up? Help me, church. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout.
the victory. friends earlier this week and I said you know at this time in my life I said there is nothing I want more than to see my Savior and to see him in peace amen because everything else doesn't matter there's nothing matters anymore it really doesn't matter amen because all the sickness and the pain and the foolishness that's going on in the world today it just doesn't matter Amen. I just want to see my Savior. Hallelujah. And I want to pray for you today and all of you here here today. Amen. If you know the Lord, most of you here I see who know him. But there's so many that don't. And we're praying for our families and our relatives and our friends who do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And I just don't want to take it for granted there may be someone here that doesn't know him. But I just want you to know that you can be a part of that body that the Elder King was speaking about today and become one with him in Christ Jesus. So let us all pray today. Father God, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the word of God that was preached today concerning being created in your image. Created in your image. And we want to be more like you every day. Father God, I want to be like you. And if we have created or committed, pardon me, any sins in our lives, and if we've done anything that displeased you, that our lives have been marred from the glory that you would have us to have, I pray, God, that you would take away all sin and unrighteousness and create us anew in Christ Jesus so that we might walk worthy before you. Thank you, God, for your word and for the message and the messenger. Continue to bless and to strengthen him in Jesus' name. And I pray, oh God, right now in Jesus' name, that I ask that those who are praying right now and calling upon your name, that you would hear their prayers and answer them right now and come into their hearts. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. amen. Come on, let's praise the name of the Lord. While you're standing, if you are prepared to give your tithe and your offerings, our Deacon Jones and Deacon Benjamin are coming. And while they're doing that, again, I'm going to ask all the men, all the men, for about five minutes in the back to please meet with me. I'm under a lot of pressure here, and I need your help, and I need you to come back and share with us. 
If you are want to be an usher, uh, if you just raise your hand and they're going to serve you. If you need an envelope, raise your hand. Again, if you're here in the auditorium and you came later, if you plan to be an usher and serve in the uh, uh, funeral services for our brother Wendell, uh, please sign up today and let us know that you're coming and so that we can give you your assignments and your post. Amen. And uh, I just want to thank you all for your support, your time that you're giving. Thank Brother Malachi for making it to church today. He had an accident and he fractured his wrist and his thumb there. He's in a cast, but he played his drums anyway. Amen. <laughs> you know, I love Brother Malachi. He said on the phone to Tiffany and I, he said, I'm coming to church. He says, I just want to be among my church family. He says, if I don't have to play with one hand, I just want to be among my family. That made us feel so good. That really did. We got off the phone and laughed with one another. I said, that, that brother really loves us and loves the yeah. church. Yeah. And he's here. Amen. Yeah. Amen. God bless him. Yeah. We pray for his healing. Amen. And his strength. He's going to be in a cast for a while. Don't overdo it, Brother Malachi. Amen. And uh, be back. Has everyone given? If you have, let's say amen. Amen. We get ready to let you go home. I want you to enjoy your afternoon with your family and your friends. Uh, I know this is an exciting day for those of you who are fans of football. Enjoy yourselves. Amen. Uh, be careful out there. Amen. Please, please be careful. And, and uh, pray for the church. And be, we'll be back here Tuesday night at 7 o'clock in Bible study. You ought to join us. It's a beautiful time. Amen. You don't have to even, you can sit there with your pajamas and study the Bible with us. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You certainly can, right? You have a good time. And uh, we have a good fellowship with one another, and we appreciate it so much. So may God bless you, and thank you for being here today. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. So let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. So let the church say amen. God is spoken, so let the church say amen. God is spoken, so let the church say amen. Amen, amen. I, lo I love that brother over there on that organ. Don't you love him? Amen, amen. He and I are going to do a concert together later on uh, in, the, in the summer and uh, look forward. We're going to have a good time together. Amen. We'll do some of his material. He's written a lot of stuff. And so if I crack, he'll fix it up for me. Amen. We'll have a good time. May the Lord bless you and keep you until we meet again. In Jesus' name, have a great day. Amen.